Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab, where I love to take thrift store finds and make them over here on the channel and share the process and my vision with you all of what I do to these items. So we're going to start right off with this cute sheep. I am just a sucker for animals when it comes to thrifting. Um, I'm not really sure the material. I think it's a ho uh, like a hollow resin, um, but I want to take that bow off. I want to give it a little bit of an update. Now that I've got the bow off, I've got it all cleaned, I'm going to start off by priming it with some Rust-Oleum enamel paint in the black. I'm testing out this Crackle by Sweet Pickens. I've really never used this product too awful much, but I wanted to sh start off with some smaller projects to see how it behaved. And I thought this sheep was a perfect Perfect, perfect little piece to start off with. So it's almost like a honey consistency, but a little bit, I don't know if you could spread honey <laughs> as easily, but uh, yes, so you just apply it, an even coat all around. Um, the direction said, depending on how thick you put it on or how thin you put it on, determines your crackles at the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to the whole little sheep. And then I have to wait, this is the hard part, I have to wait two hours <laughs> before I can apply my paint color. Being patient is one of those hard things, but you know, I'm probably working on a few more projects while this one's sitting off to the side. Now for his paint color, I'm going to go ahead and use a Sweet Pickens window paint. You know, I am a fan of white. I'm kind of loving it on the milk paint right now, so it's equal parts. And I've got a few projects that I'm going to be doing this uh, milk paint on, so I'm making a good, good helping, <laughs> good helping anyway. So yes, it's equal parts powder to equal parts water, and then you stir and stir and stir for about two minutes. And it really, I think it mixes very easily. Uh, I mean, two minutes really isn't that long. And so as you start mixing it up, it will start do, having air bubbles. You can tell the consistency is really quite creamy. So you mix it up to have like a pancake batter consistency. So it's runny, but not too runny, a little bit on the thicker side. So now I just go ahead and apply it. And I can feel the stickiness of the crackle as I'm holding on this little lamb, um, but it's not coming off in my fingers. So it's attracting the paint and it's keeping the paint on. So I'm kind of doing a dabbing motion as there's a lot of little details in the sheep. Like I said, there's no... you. It just is going to do what it's going to do. And I can see as soon as I start to apply, it already starts to separate and wants to start to crackle. So would you look at that amazing wowzers. <laughs> that is some amazing crackles. You can see the black underneath that really spread out. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of the antiquing glazing to give this a little bit more of an antiqued look. The Fusion Antiquing Glaze is a wipe on, brush on, and then you wipe off the excess. Just going to take away that extremely stark white of this piece. Did like the bell that was around his little neck but I'm going to go ahead and add a piece of aged leather to it to attach it back on. So to age the leather I'm just going to stick it in my bottle of Waverly watered down antiquing wax mi mixture.
So it's so much fun just working with a new product, not knowing how it's going to react. So smalls are wonderful for these types. So now I have these candlesticks and these are the same thing. They appear to be wood, but they're not. They are also a resin, but I love the chuckiness. I love the shape of them. I love that there's two and that they tear, but um, they've been used as what they were for, for candles. So they have some candle wax on them. So I'm going to go ahead and get them cleaned up, but then I'll get my heat gun to get any wax off that top. For me, the easiest way is just to use the heat gun. You can see where it becomes wet and then you just wipe and then, you know, keep keep going and get it washed off. If you leave wax behind, your paint will not adhere to it. It'll quickly, quickly spread away from it. Now, I want to use the crackle technique on these two, but this yellow is not the color I want to see. I don't mind seeing a little bit of it, but so I'm going to go ahead and make it look a little bit more wood-like by using the Fusions a Chocolate Brown. And I'm only going to apply one coat. Like I said, I like to see that variation of color underneath the crackle. So one coat will be plenty. You'll see some dark brown. You'll see a little bit of the toned down yellow when it does what it's supposed to do. As I said, I don't know how each one of these products, items, will react to the crackle. I'm not sure if I'm using the right paint, not using the right paint. Everything in crafting is kind of a trial and error. And when it does work out, you're like, woohoo, it worked out. So like I said, doing smalls and trying out products like this is just is uh, for me, it's the best route before I try to do it on a larger, uh, more substantial piece. this is a test kind of market thing for me, all the product items I'm making over today are going to be getting window paint. I really like this milk paint and I can see using it more and more. But I do feel like it's a one coat kind of thing since you have your um, paint effect on there that you really need to get this next coat on one because it's going to crackle. So you're not going to reapply after it dries the second coat. So the milk paint is a little bit thicker. Dabbing it on is getting a little bit, you know, getting it on there. Like I said, the crackle effect itself is sticky, so it's attracting the paint. So as you see, I'm not really doing a brush stroke as I'm just kind of just dabbing um, the paint on there and of course I flipped it upside down first so I could get that bottom area so I can get this all covered up in one coat. And right away you can see it's separating and I kept trying to go back over and touch it and then I realized it's just the crackle working. The crackle automatically is working so just let it do its business and leave it alone. While that is drying and setting off I'm going to go ahead and do a couple wood rounds to put on the top of it. So these are the unfinished pieces like you can buy at Hobby Lobby or Joann's is usually where I get mine. Um, so I'm just getting them sanded down because they have a very rough texture. So oh, look at that crackle. Is it not amazing? And then in my thought process, you know, I bet you you could do pieces and parts and not have your entire object. Maybe you don't have to apply the crackle all over the entire object. So just a thought process why, why I'm working with this. So I'm using some tight bond thick glue to glue these on. Um, just a nice speed around. I like the wood to wood glue because that seems to have more of a permanent bond for me, you could use Gorilla Glue, you could use Crazy Glue, whatever glue you have. This is just the one that I, I, I usually go to. And then I'll set it off to the side and let it dry because the, the quick and thick takes about an hour to dry. 
Now that my glue is set up and is dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint these wood rounds. Yes, I'm going to paint them. I'm going to use that same chocolate fusion paint that I did for the underneath color to tie these all together. And it won't, that way the white of the window pane won't look so white, white. Because these wood rounds are raw wood they really soak in that paint one coat was enough and then giving them a light sanding and distressing them a little bit makes the paint look like more of a dark brown stain i do feel like that it, that paint is good and on there but i'm going to go ahead and make sure i seal the paint in with a little bit of the varathane natural wax and i'll run it over the top just to bring that shine back to that brown I really need to count how many times I've made this home interior candle abra over. <laughs> I have made it over, uh, I don't even know. I'd have to go back and count videos. It only has one of its metal inserts left, so I need to go ahead and pop that out. Um, usually they're not too bad. A screwdriver, some type of needle nose pliers, and you can kind of bend the watt, the metal and get it to pop out. But this one was, whew, it was way dirty. It actually had greenery, like some fog foliage on it. So I've already discarded that, but I need to get all this dust wiped down. Yes, I'm going to be using the crackle on this too now. When I've always I've always painted these some type of white and I've always painted them with some type of paint effect, being distressing with chalk paint, being Vaseline or doing crackle with Elmer's glue. Um and they've always sold right away, so why not give this crackle effect uh, a try so i can go right over the metal right over the wood all i did was clean this piece i didn't pre-sand anything um so we'll see how it works Yes, again, yet again, some amazing crackle effect. That is the hard thing when it's you start to apply it, I find, is that you try to go back over because you're like, oh, well, I didn't get paint on there. But it's that crackle effect working right away. So for this piece, I'm just using some weather defense to get it sealed in.
thank you so much for watching today's video. Yes, it was fun. I have always used the Elmer glue to make my crackle and the process, it's a process. You know, it's a hit or miss. And, and so I wanted to try the patina of crackle and wow, wow, does it give some crackle. And I even tried to go thin on the little lamb. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely think it's gorgeous. Um, patience of waiting two hours because I'm used to doing the Elmer's glue and then you just apply it and then you know you're on your way and you have to let it dry. But anyway, give me a quick comment down below. Have you used this cracking technique, crackle technique? And do you prefer this or do you feel prefer the Elmer glue method? Um, I think you can achieve different looks with using both items. So I'll probably always have them on hand. So thank you again for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. And you can see what we're up to. Bye.